Yeah. Son of God, we love you. Good day and good day. Welcome to uh, yet another funky daily devotional. Today's verse of the day is Psalm 16, 8. I keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. And that's Psalm 16, 8. And what a good verse for today. Today's message is when someone does you wrong. Behold, I give unto you to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall any by, <coughs> by any means hurt you. And that's Luke ten nineteen. Someone's done you wrong. Sooner or later, it happens to all of us. <coughs> Somewhere along the way, we all get hurt or cheated or lied to or abused. It's as predictable as it is painful. Yet when it happens, most of us find ourselves strangely unprepared. In our outrage, we often cry out to God against the one who wronged us. We ask for justice or even vengeance and end up making things tougher on everyone involved, including ourselves. If that's been true to you, it's time you found out how you can put the power of God to work for you the next time someone does you wrong. Step one, identify the enemy. Right here... Right here's where the major majority of us make our biggest blunder. We mistakenly identify our enemy as the person who hurt us. Don't waste your energy ranting or raving or plotting and scheming against people who can use, who can't, who cause you pain, sorry. They're simply under the devil's influence. Aim your spiritual ammunition at the right target. It's the devil who's behind it all. Go after him. Step two, fire. (laughs) <laughs> Gotta squeeze the trigger. Once you pointed your spiritual guns in the right direction, fire. Hit the devil fast and furiously with the word of God. Use the name of Jesus and the power that's been given to you as a believer and bind the devil from doing any doing you any further harm in that area. Then move on to the next and most important part of this spiritual battle. Step three, pray the prayer of intercession. In Matthew 5, 44, 45, Jesus gives us these instructions. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. Crying out for vengeance of God to strike the lightning bolt when someone does us wrong isn't acting like our Father. Remember, God has great, great mercy, not just for you and me, but for everyone. The devil will probably think twice before he bothers you again. Next time someone causes you pain, put the power of God to work for you. Identify the real enemy. Hit him hard with the authority you've been given as a believer. Then pray the prayer of intercession. Scripture reading is Matthew 6, 6 to 15. And I'm guessing NIV, but we will see what comes up here. NIV. I'm going to read ESV. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees you in secret will reward you. Verse seven. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray like this. Our father in heaven, hallowed, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, and your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our doubts, our debts, as we also forgive our debtors. Forgive us, as we also are commanded to forgive others. Interesting, hey? Verse 13, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your Father, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. 15, But do if you do not forgive others their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Do you guys see how important it is that you forgive others for the wrongs that they've done you? It's in verse 14 and 15. Footnotes here, Matthew 6, 9. Or let your name be kept holy, or let your name be treated with reverence. Matthew 6, 10. Or let your kingdom come, let your will be done. Or Matthew 6, 11. Or our bread for tomorrow. Right? It's not only for today, it's also for tomorrow. It's our provision forever, for now and forever. Matthew 6, 13, or the evil one. Some manuscripts add, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
So we're going to read the commentation here for Matthew 6, 6 to 15 in the BLB. Hey, Google, set a timer for five minutes. Hey, Google, set a timer for five minutes. Five minutes, starting now. And we started at, I think it's verse 6 to 15, so we're going to find. Here we go. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites. Jesus assumed that his disciples would give. So he told them the right way to give. Matthew 6, 1 to 4. He also assumed that the disciples would pray. And it was important that they not pray in the same manner as the hypocrites. I think I'm a little bit further back. So we're going to continue. There are no dumb children in God's house. The least he hath can ask him blessing. All are not alike gifted, but every godly man prayeth unto thee, saith David. Psalm 32, verse 6. For they loved to pray standing in the synagogues and on the, the corners of the street. There were two main places where a Jew in Jesus' day might pray in a hypocritical manner. They might pray at the synagogue at the time of public prayer, or at the street appointed times of prayer, 9, noon, and 3 p.m. In synagogue worship, someone from the congregation might be asked to pray publicly, stand in front of the ark, Carson. Prayer was not normally practiced at the street corners, but one who strictly observed the afternoon hour of prayer could deliberately, um, a prayer could deliberately time his movements to bring him to the most public place at the appropriate time. France. The, it's quotation from France, sorry. That they may be seen by men. These hypocrites prayed not to be heard by, by God, but to be seen by men. This is a common fault in public prayer today. When people pray to impress or teach other, others instead of genuinely pouring out their hearts before God. Such prayers are an insult to God. When we mouth words towards God while we're trying to impress others, we then use God merely as a tool to impress others. They have their reward. Again, those praying to be seen of men have their reward, and they should enjoy it in full, because that is all they will receive. There is no reward in heaven for such prayers. But you, when you pray, go into your room. Rather, we should meet with God in our room or closet. The idea is of a private place where we can impress no one except God. The specific ancient Greek word room was used for the storeroom where treasures were kept. This reminds us that there are treasures waiting for us in our prayer closet. Jesus certainly did not prohibit public prayer, but our prayer should always be directed to God and not towards man. Matthew 6, 7 to 8. The right way to pray. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathens do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things that you need even before you ask Him. When you pray, do not use vain repetitions. The kind of prayer does not use vain repetitions, which is any and all prayer, which is mostly words with no meaning, all lips and no mind and heart. Rabbi Levi said, Levi said, Whoever is long in prayer is heard. Another saying has it. Whenever the righteous make their prayer long, their prayer is heard. Barclay. That's a quotation from Barclay. One famous Jewish prayer began like this. Blessed, praised, and glorified, exalted and honored, magnified, and lauded be the name of the Holy One. One can pray long, but the wrong, but to the wrong God. In 1 Kings 18.26, the prophets of Baal cried out, O Baal, answer us for half the day. In Acts uh, 19.34, a mob in Ephesus shouted, Great is Artemis of the Ephesians. Hey Google, stop. Hey Google, stop. For two hours. The true God isn't impressed by the length or eloquence of our prayers, but the heart. Prayer requires more of the heart than of the tongue. 
The eloquence of prayer consists in the fervency of desire and the simplicity of faith. And that's a quotation of Clark. When we try to impress God or worse other people with our many words, we deny that God is loving, yet Holy Father. Instead, we should follow the counsel of, the, of Ecclesiastes 5.2. God is in heaven, and you are on earth. Therefore, let your words be few. Christians' prayers are measured by weight and not by length. Many of the most prevailing prayers have been as short as they were strong, and that's a quotation of Spurgeon. The NIV translates the phrase vain repetitions as keep on babbling. That, th that may be an accurate sense of the ancient Greek word for batelegio, which may be a word that sounds like babbling and has the sense of blah, blah, blah. Heavenly Father, we don't want to speak meaningless words. No, God, we want to be honorable to you. God, we want to stretch out our hearts and our minds and everything that we are in reverence and holiness to you, Heavenly Father. I thank you, God, that in spite of my, my hair, my hairdo or the way that I look or whatever, God, you hear this. You see this. You see my heart. You see into my innermost being, God. And you see into the most inner being of everyone else who's listening, who's watching, who's reading their devotions every day, who's walking about. God, you know us more intimately than we know ourselves. Thank you, God, that I am your child. Thank you, God, that you love me as much as you do. Thank you, God, you've given me as much strength as you've given me, God, and as much joy. Um, I am so happy for this childlike joy. I know that I feel a little beat up recently, God, in some of the conversations uh, and comments, but just like Bobby Connor, Father, I am thankful for a childlike wonder and joy that I can learn to enjoy and live every single day, even in spite of terrible, terrible circumstances, God. And there are a lot of terrible circumstances around us, and they can hit close to home. But God, you are much bigger than all that. You are much stronger than all that. So God, I, I pray for healing. I pray for strength. I pray for your love, God. And not lengthy, long prayers so that I might be heard by others, but prayer that be heard by God the Father. I love you, Lord. I want to dedicate my life to you in every circumstance, in every place, and ask for your help in the name of Yeshua. We all ask for your help. We need you, God, more than ever. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. We pray, amen.